Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, and today I am going to be reading the first chapter of of Stick Dog Craves Candy. Okay, let's get to it. It was early, it was early, oh sorry, I dropped my book. Okay, it was early evening and Stick Dog was asleep in his pipe. He woke. He awoke, and he, when he heard a familiar sound, it was the padding of his four friends' paws as they came toward his home. Stripes, Mutt, Karen, and Poo Poo rustled leaves, sticks, and underbrush that, as they made their way to his pipe. This was, without a doubt, one of Stick Dog's favorite times. He always enjoyed seeing and playing with his friends, of course, of course, but Stick Dog loved to hear the other dogs approach his home for another reason, too. They often w got lost in the woods surrounding his pipe, and and when they did, it was quite, an, quite amusing to see Stick dog. Sometimes they found their way to his pipe in the five minutes, and sometimes it took tw them twenty. The record was an entire afternoon. The best part for Stick Dog was that he could hear little comments his friends made to each other as they caught his, as they saw his pipe, his pipe, and. This what well, this day was no exception. Stick Dog could hear them talking fifty yards to the left. I I think Stick Dog moved his pipe again," said Karen, uh, the the Dutch Dutch not Dutch son. Sorry, that's that's the third time this week," Mud added. A stick dog smiled to himself and coughed a couple times to give away his location a little bit. I could he I can I hear him, said Karen. Me too, said Mutt. It it's this way. In a couple of minutes and several more coughs, Karen, Poo Poo and Stripes uh, Karen, Poo Poo, Stripes and Mutt emerged from the forest and front of Stick Dog's pipe. Stick Dog, Karen said, and squatted it down to a bush, burrs her with, from her fur with her and fr front paws. You have to stop moving your pipe. It just, it makes it too hard for us to find. Stick Dog glanced up at the roof of his pipe, and then all the way around him, the rim of its opening. It was a huge pipe. It was probably eight feet high, and it ran all the way under Highway 16, which is a four-lane highway, about 100, about 100 feet above him. I didn't move it, said Stick Dog. I couldn't. It's at the bottom of this giant hill, and it, and it goes all the way through. There must be 200 tons of dirt and rocks above this thing. How could I possibly move it? Well, it's not where it was yesterday, said Stripes, with the, the, the Dalmatian agreeing with Karen. Of course it is. I concur with Karen and Stripes, said Mutt. If it was where it was yesterday, we would have found it much quicker. Quicker, yes, it's get dick dog. You would think so. Aha! Yelled Poo Poo. The poodle, you admitted it. You've been moving your pipe. Stick dog shook his head uh, and wondered if it was worth continuing the conversation. It he decided it was. I didn't admit moving the pipe. I agreed that you should be able to find it. Should be able to find the pipe if I had if I hadn't moved it. Um, I know a thing or two about logic," said Karen. She she uh, scooched her belly across the ground, trying to scrape the, a final 
fur of her fur and and you just proved yourself wrong stick dog first you first you said we couldn't we shouldn't we should be able to find your pipe second you should we should we couldn't find it therefore the pipe must have moved e excellent D deductive reasoning karen ex uh, exclaimed karen ex Blamed way to figure it out. Yes, yes, Stripe said, and Poo Poo pointed a paw directly at Stick Dog. He smiled slightly from the one side of his mouth. He squinted one eye. He squinted one eye and declared in a loud, sharp whisper, "You're busted." Um, now Stick Dog could have said, "Maybe you guys." just aren't very good at finding things in the woods or he could have just asked how in the world can i pull a, a huge pipe out from under 200 ton hill of rocks and dirt he, or he could have said you guys are nuts but stick dog didn't say any of those things he liked he liked the looks of, on their faces. It, they expressed a sense of accomplishment. Stick Dog was off, was often the one who ended up being right about things, whether it was some, it was some piece of information or the legitimate, the legitimacy of a particular food snatching strategy, and it, and now that. The other dogs thought they had gotten the best of him, even though, st though Stick Dog knew that they hadn't. He liked the way they were feeling about themselves. So Stick Dog let them believe that he had moved his pipe just to trick them. Um, Sorry, um, and he changed the subject entirely by saying this. I'm hungry. We should, we, we need to find some food. Food is, by the way, the own, the one and only best way to get dog, a dog's attention. And I'm not just making this up at, for the story's sake. Do you want proof about this dog characteristic, characteristic? Okay. Find a dog, and you have some cheese or a little piece or little pieces of chicken with you. Now give that dog a favorite toy, a tennis ball, a chewed up rope, or maybe a baseball cap. Whatever. Let let him you let him get used to having that toy. Let him gnaw on it, snuggle with it. Um. Well, we'll use the baseball cap as an example. Here, here's what they're thinking. Man is, man, this baseball cap is the absolute best. I can't wait, I can't believe they gave it to me. They used to wear this thing on their heads and now it's mine. Why would they want to cover up their only patch of fur anyway? I don't understand these humans. They're loony. Oh, never mind. I love this cap, and it's chewy and flexible, uh, and everything I love. It doesn't taste too good, but who cares? I'll. I think I'll swallow little pieces of it later anyway. Woo hoo! The dog loves the this cap, right? Now put. Now, do this. Put a single piece of cheese. Or a little piece of chicken on the floor, about ten feet away. Uh, make sure the dog sees you, but you don't have to call him or point to the food or anything. Now, watch what happens. Ninety percent of all dogs will drop the cap that will drop the cap that just nanosec just nanoseconds ago was the absolute center of their universe, and and go get that food. You know, you know the other 10% do? They're not the smart ones. 
they take the baseball cap over food over to the food on the floor and then they drop the cap next to the food eat the food and pick the base and pick the cap up but make but make no sense it's the food they want the most need further proof this for this 10% of einstein dogs all right M mr or mrs mrs I don't believe everything I read in a book. I try this: get a dog to stay, then they, then the baseball cap, then take the baseball cap and put it on the floor a few feet away to the left of the dog. Then take a tasty food morsel and put it on the floor a few feet away. A few feet away to the right, and now say, "Okay, t uh, to release the fine beast and see where he goes first. He will go to food every time, guaranteed. If he doesn't go to the food, f to the food first, I'm afraid I might have some bad news for you. Here it is. How what do you, what do you have in?" front of you that is not a dog. I know. I don't know how, what it is. How could I? I'm not even there. But it's most certainly not a dog. It may, it may be a big rabbit or a hamster. Or maybe, maybe it's your little sister or brother Jeff dressed up in a dog costume to, to fool you. Younger siblings always do stuff like that. Um, I don't think that, specifically that, but, so, this is not a dog. Whatever it is, not a dog, whatever it is, it is not a dog. So you, so you should go to your parents and say, I want a dog, and when they say, we, we already have a dog, you say, no, we don't. This whatever it does, it is does not does not prioritize food and uh, over its favorite toy. Therefore, it's not a dog, and I want a dog. Use the highly scientific toy versus food test to prove everything to your parents. Um, they might not be convinced, but they will still appreciate your scientific methods. So yeah. Anyway, when Stick Dog said when Stick Dog said he was hungry, that was it. The there was no more of no more talk of them. The giant uh, moving the giant pipe. Uh, now the dogs were focused on completely on food, or precisely their lack of food. Rising uh, above the whisper of the wind through the Brant, birch, and sycamore trees above the rustle and crackle of leaves be beyond the steady and rhythmic beat to traffic high above on Highway 16. More, a more pronounced and scientific sound can be heard. The stomach of rumbling. The stomach rumblings of five hungry dogs. Okay, that was chapter one. Then, I will read chapter two. Well, not in this video. As, uh, feel free to leave any more suggestions. And, as always, um, have an amazing day. Bye!